they they want to be on stage. It, it, it's the ego thing. I, I don't decry that. You, you, you better have ego if you're going to be a performer, or you'll just sit there mumbling. The first album that I remember really connecting with was Help, which, right. uh, which is still one of my fa it's still my favourite Beatles album. And it's still one of my favourite albums. If if I wanted to play in front of all my friends, I'd just stay out in Worcester and do that. Why would I bring them all to London? That's not the point. I'm coming to the, your place to play in front of different people. Your job is your job title is a promoter, so promote it. You'd open up your CD collections. There'd be 35 discs a week ruined by smoke and tobacco, which was just, you know, a film over the top of your, your discs. This guy is just surrounded by as many phobias as John could think of, <laughs> <laughs> and he and reckons he reckons they've all got names. I think he came up with about 200. Amazing, yeah, <laughs> absolutely amazing. For me, Little Earthquakes by Torremos. Um, track number six, so obsessed I am, Happy Phantom, is the perfect song. It has everything I need. I drove through the night 700 miles from Berlin to Ghent and did the same there. Went out, went busking, and uh, then found a, found a gig to play in the evening. And uh, you know, so like, oh, free bar, help yourself to the Belgian beers. <laughs> he and Andrew Marston have been very supportive of us. We've done a couple of sessions with them. But Andy's out every night, yeah. I suspect, every night of for the free. week. For free. For nothing. Yeah. Uh, and he goes, he reviews, uh, and he gets behind people, and they have the, you know, the introducing stage at various things. People like Andy O'Hare are the unsung heroes, yeah. really, of the music. When I was a child being on the train going to Weymouth and having a portable radio, me and my sister had a radio, and hearing C. Emily play for the first time and uh, being totally blown yeah. away, and then buying it when we got to Weymouth and then just playing it and playing it over and over again. Uh, this is the bit that you're going to think is really bizarre, because uh, even the big nightclubs were doing it, but you'd then play stuff that would get the blokes up. Uh, yeah. So you talk about status quo and deep purple at this point. Okay. <laughs> so Caroline or Roll Over Lay but, but it was in the top ten. We took it on from um, James Perry. James 114070. It was his idea actually. Um, and in August, September 04, James said, I want to run a blues night. You find me the singers and, um, and we'll do it. And, and I really like the psychedelic. I mean, I'm a hippie. I'll yeah. always be a hippie. There's no sort of like two ways. I'm not going to be anything else really. I think if your main objective is money and fame, it does, it does allow integrity to slide a little bit. And I think, you know, people escape on the internet. Not that I did so much, but, you know, people escape and they want to be something which they are a tiny bit, um, but not all the time. And that was just epic. Yeah. <laughs>